Hi there, I'm Kat Corbett. Uh, we are live in the Red Bull Sound Space with uh, Mast and Nathan from Cold War Kids. Thank you boys for uh, doing that acoustic set. Thank you, yeah. For um, Hold My Home, your fifth studio album. Fifth in, in a little over a decade. You yeah. guys have been working very hard. Yes. EPs too. I know. Yeah. And live and covers and... This and that. You guys need an quit. intervention, I think. Like a workaholic I intervention. I know. We, there was a there was a moment I think it was kind of after the third record, which we kind of did the more I think I feel like that was the most like um, time spent and like expectations building and and then like and, and waiting around wait like months and months and months before it came out is like what I think of as now like the very old school way of doing things like mm -hmm. so much emphasis on how's this record gonna do and then. And it just kind of did like we've had this great steady build. We've had this great like like live shows, releases. Everything's just been like, you know, we have our audience in it. And after that, it kind of seemed like let's just keep putting music out. Let's just like not put so much emphasis on like the record or the single or the moment. And like let you know. And I think it was because we still had a lot of growing to do. And um, and so yeah. So it's nice. We are where we are now. Where we like we just put this this. Um, five quick cuts EP out, which is a record store day thing, and then I guess it will come out digitally in a couple months. And, um, but yeah, it's just cool. It's cool to like have, it's so, it feels so much better to have all this stuff going on than it does to kind of like just be waiting. Here's our record, and we're just waiting for stuff to happen, you know? So it's, it is it's interesting nice. because you guys are, w did come along at the time when it was the old school, you waited, you did yeah. the prep, you, yeah. you know, did that. And now you complete your career has evolved as the music business has evolved. That's yeah. crazy to think. I didn't even think about that. Totally. I, I, you know, we were our band started it when like MySpace was a brand new thing. Yeah. And we were like, you know, it's like I feel like we've always um, blogs were brand new. I had a friend who told me about this one. My old Kentucky blog. He's like, I read about you guys on this, and it was like, it, it, and to him it was like, dude, this is a big deal, and and, I, and none of our friends knew about it. So. We sent CDs out to a bunch of different blogs, and that became our introduction to a lot of people as we'd go out on tour. Like, right. hey, I read about you on this thing, and that was brand new. So I feel like we've always we've always been pretty good about kind of being just aware enough of the the climate, I guess, of what's what's going on. And and yeah, I don't know. Well, I, I, uh, I, you know, I was, I was checking, and I was like, they've had to have played Weenie Roast before, K Rock oh, yeah. Weenie Roast, and finally, and and you had it, and so finally, this is the planets have aligned between your record and K Rock Weenie Roast, and so we're really happy to have you. So rad, yeah. Especially for being local boys. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. You know, and I, I was over, I was overhearing your your uh, conversation about Snoop Dogg, mm -hmm. Lost. Yeah. Um, because local boy and certainly identifies with the area that that Cold War Kids came out of. Mm -hmm. um, your mom was asking you if you had met him yet. Yeah, because we played a couple times with him just two weeks ago again. And my mom was like, "Did you meet him yet?" No, not yet. He's, he's a lot taller than me, and he's just yeah. he's got other stuff. He's a busy it. man. So yeah. day you get you get to meet him. I was behind him on a plane one time, right behind him getting on a plane at LAX, but he had his headphones on. So I wasn't going to bother. Well, when the day comes and the picture happens, that needs to be framed and wrapped up for your mother. Yeah. And sent to her. Yeah. I love that she loves, she keeps asking about Snoop yeah. Dogg. She's asked me a couple times, every time. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, I want to ask you guys about, uh, you know, I, I seriously, my jaw dropped open when I saw the trailer for uh, Cameron Crowe's new film, Aloha, yeah. mm -hmm. and your song was used in the trailer. Yeah. And. You know, for me, from my perspective, a Cameron Crowe movie using your music is like being baptized by the greatest music fan ever. It looks like a music video. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, what did, what did yeah. that mean to you guys? It was, it was amazing, yeah. Uh, I think it was, it was such a, like a, a fast thing where we got an email, hey, check this out. Like, it, this is gonna like happen like tomorrow or something. It was like something so fast. And we just watched it and it was like, the the song itself was I feel like it was like half the song or something like a, a huge chunk of the song and it was just like this is incredible this and you're right like it's it is kind of yeah there's no like higher compliment you know that you could get from a director in your film mm -hmm. um, really cool yeah it, it's pretty fantastic and so congratulations on that as well and that. it was like funny watching it where it was like 
at the amount of like biggest actors in the world kind of thing. It was like, oh, no way. And there's kind of like, and there's Bill Murray. And then and there's like John Krasinski. It kept getting like more and more like, wow, this is the most stacked movie ever. It's all rad. So it was like, yeah. rad. Do you, you know, I always think about moments like that. That's such a, that's such a career high for an artist, you know, of having work recognized and then other great artists associated with it. And to think sometimes you know, if you had called it quits uh, yeah. a, w a while ago, and maybe these songs would have never happened. Mm -hmm. um, was there ever a moment in the 10, 11 years that you guys were kind of like, eh, maybe this isn't happening? I mean, I, it's like, I don't think so. I mean, do you think so? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've always been oh, like, uh -oh, I've always, I don't want to like. <laughs> I, not me, I've, I've always loved it. I mean, even the, even the lows are, I love playing shows. You guys, well, you guys, um, I was noticing when you guys were, you know, setting up and sound checking how much fun you were having. Yeah. yeah. Just, even it's after like, all this time doing it, you're just like, we have, around. You have to entertain yourself. I think yeah. that we're good at entertaining ourselves by doing this job. I think it's a great question. I, th I, my, I my theory that I've, in the last couple of years more, is that like any band, like their natural life of like, it being really fun, I think, is is like three to maybe five years. If you get five years where it's just like it's just fun, like bands in the '60s would break up and then start a new band, and because there was that sense of like, oh well, is it fun? Is it spontaneous? And but I think as you and we've had a couple members change and and like kind of new blood. I think has you know we started very much the way that every band starts, but having no idea about anything, having no idea that like we're going to be committing our whole life to being on tour and making, you know, recording, performing. That's all we do. And especially the first few years, we, we just toured nonstop. And I think that that, like, you know, you realize, like, after, after the f first record little, you know, kind of magic dust wears off and mm -hmm. you're like, do, like do, do, how long do I see myself being able to do this? I think, like, um, you know, yeah, you have to ask yourself those questions and yeah not know like are we ever gonna be like um like are we growing are we getting smaller bigger does it matter what is it all about you know and i i feel like yeah i feel like to to be where we are now like really this song first you know starting to kind of like getting a radio play getting this like you know movie trailer stuff it's it's all the like it does like you don't want to live for those things because if you're just like working towards that it feels too like doesn't feel authentic but like but at the same time it's an enormous like reward to get like for you know K-Rock's playing our song for you know Cameron Crow trailer and and just that people love it that I get texts from my friends like your song's insane I heard it on the radio and it's like it does there's to bring it back to the start there's the feeling of just like yeah, I'm so glad we're still doing this after well, 10 years. Well, and, and all like, of that stuff just means it's really connecting. Yeah, like, it's yeah. like, you know, and there's nothing wrong with yeah. success. It's great. You know, it's I mean, great, I, think, yeah. I know bands have that, you know, a hard time, you know, with artistry and success and, yeah. you know, but you do want to survive and you do want to make an impact and you do want to have the most people listening to stuff. So mm. I just, I just think it's incredible. But it was, it was, like I said, it was really nice to watch you guys kind of just messing around and figuring it out. And, and I know you had a new drummer this time around yeah. on this record so yeah. that was the new blood that was in here yeah and, yeah um so when you guys were doing this acoustic setup and i noticed you were trying to like figure out stuff was this the first time you had done just this equation of the three of you we've done it uh matt schwartz and i've done like when we'll go into like you know radio on tour in the morning and just bang out like three songs really quick he and i will do it together and um uh, so, and Moss has done less of them, but yeah. This I, is the first time I think I've ever done bass in this kind of, at least in yeah. years. Yeah. Felt different and good. Okay. Yeah. Right. But acoustic things are always funny too, because I we're always, I've always been, a, like drums are always important. So it is that, like, yeah, it's kind of fun to figure it out without it. Okay. Well, it looked and sounded great. So cool. that was a nice little spontaneous uh, setup that you guys ended up doing. So yeah, we probably should have done that two days ago, like no. on our own time. But <laughs> I like seeing how it worked out and you were trying to figure out like, how are we going to end this one this time? And I was like, wait, they must have been doing a new configuration. Um, well, we are so happy to have you on K-Rock Weenie Roast and, and, and Hold My Home, um, fifth great record. Uh, we're just gonna be uh, hearing what new tracks, a mix of old tracks. Yeah, we've been playing show. a good amount of new songs. Okay. And yeah, 
it's it's really it's like a fun problem to have when you have all these songs that you're like okay this one actually wasn't on a record but a lot of people know it and it's like yeah just having all this material it's like it's fun we get to we get to play around with it a lot well thank you for doing this preview um yeah. but we're gonna see you on may 16th so yay rad thanks right for on us. cool yeah. work kids everybody thank you yeah